Hi, I'm Mac McCarthy and I help people with their breakups. And today I got another story to add to the 300 plus stories on the YouTube channel. Keep them coming and I'm turning them around sooner and better than I've ever done before because I'm committed to this channel right now. So if you got a breakup story, visit writemac.com, send it in and I'll get you my take as soon as possible. Okay, let's get right into this one. I haven't really reviewed it because it just came in a couple hours ago. That's how fast I'm turning them around here. Hello, Mac. Thank you for doing what you do. Well, thank you for saying thank you, like I said. You are helping a lot of people get through tough times. Let me tell you something. I've been there. It's been a while, but I've been there, and I've been on both ends. I've done a lot of research on it, and that's why I'm willing to help, and I'm happy to help. And there's coach currency out there. Listen, I'm not making a ton of money off this. I do make money on the paid coachings. I do have people that are very generous in donating after if they're satisfied with the story I said. But you know what? If you say thank you and you're happy with it, that also is a little bit of coach currency for myself, right? My ex, my ex broke up with me a little over two months ago. We were together for three years. I was her first lover. Wow. That's a big deal, man, because all she knows is you and all she knows about re serious relationships is you. So you created the model of what a relationship was. We are both 24 years old. Our relationship was strong. No cheating. Uh... It says B-I-H for fights. I don't know what that means. So I'm just thinking not many fights. She is an insecure person, constantly seeking approval, and it was kind of hard for me to keep up with that. But I love that person, and it kept me going. So, I mean, everyone's got their warts. Everyone's got their vices. Everyone's got their problems. I would say, you know, young women, there's a lot of them out there that are insecure, and it has to do with, you know, the environment out there. Something happened in her childhood. Um... But the idea, you know, like I said, insecurity as a young person, I mean, I know as a teenager and in my early 20s looking back, I was highly insecure. I was really worried about what people thought of me more than ever before. How do you get through insecurity? You challenge yourself more. You put yourself out there more. You do things that you didn't think you could do and you get through them and you get around people that support you, people that are, are good for your character. But if someone's uh, identity of themselves is so low and that was built maybe in their childhood if, if they had a parent that always told them they were ugly or stupid um, I've heard from people a lot before like oh you know I've never been good in school and they, they, they go back and I go where'd you get that from well I had this one teacher one time that embarrassed me in front of everyone and told me I was the worst speller they ever had and that people carry that shit so if she's really insecure she might need to get some counseling or some personal help and get to the root to that problem Constantly seeking approval can be exhausting. I mean, because if you're, if you're giving her approval, obviously you love and care, her, care about her. Um, I'm sure you're giving her that approval. And when it's not enough, it can be exhausting. It can take the energy out of you. And you can, quite frankly, you just get sick of it. And it kept me going. I'm a confident, never, I'm never jealous or needy. Well, that's a statement. And the fact that you feel like you're a confident person, well, good for fucking you. Probably the most attractive trait a person can have. But after about two and a half years, I stopped putting in effort. Well, that's about the time. Usually two years, two and a half years, the honeymoon kind of ends. You kind of get annoyed with each other. Sometimes there's monotony going on. It's getting boring in your routines. And you stop making an effort. That's quite possible. I mean, I still courted her, but not as much as I used to. Well, you probably stopped. Then she dropped the bomb. She said that she loves me, but is not feeling it anymore. I was devastated. Strong word, but, but this is also a serious relationship for you. I did cry when she broke up with me. Then I started no contact. Crying is actually good for you. It's a way that the body releases emotion, and you shouldn't be ashamed of that. If you could do it outside of her presence, it would probably make you feel better. But if you did it, it's okay, man. Then she... Um, I was devastated. Okay, then I started no contact, did it for two weeks, and then broke it. I know that was stupid. It happens. It's all right. We exchanged a few messages. She was very quick with the replies, very friendly, but said she needed more time. Now she's in control of the relationship. The minute you start chasing, exchanging messages, and then she cuts you off, she's taking the steering wheel. Since then, I was in a strict no contact and bumped into her a week ago. I was very positive and smiling all the time. Was it genuine? She looked very scared, avoiding eye contact with me like she wanted to run away. Why was she scared if she dumped me? Well, I'm not really sure. 
She might feel bad. She might feel a little shame. She might be seeing someone else. You know, I know you don't want to hear that. But if she couldn't make eye contact, when she was highly uncomfortable and awkward, that means that she probably thinks because you were smiling that you're still into her and she doesn't want to continue on or embarrass you and it made her uncomfortable. But something inside her made her feel shameful in some way for her to act that way. Also, I'd like to know, how can I get my power back? I continue with no contact and I will not contact her first. After the breakup, I got a better job. Good for fucking you. Continued working out. I'm feeling a lot better, but I still want all my power back. Thanks in advance. Keep up the great work, coach. Well, thank you. Okay. Um, it's going to take time, period. A lot of people, well, how do you, you're not going to get that back in a day. Just like your relationship took time. Just like when you first got with her, you probably did, you know, being that you were the first guy she was with, I'm sure that you didn't, she didn't become your girlfriend in a week. It took some time. And this is going to take some time. You were together for uh, three years and it's going to take some time to get your full power back. You're going to have times when you're sad, when you're upset and you've got to feel those times and deal with them. And I, I, I just did a video on the five things you could do um, in a breakup moving forward. Uh, if you want to watch that video, you can. And one of the ones is come up with a compelling future. That's a, that's a big one. Come up with something that you couldn't do while she was your girlfriend that you're looking forward, whether that's a trip, whether that's moving somewhere, that's big. Go through that video, five things to do when you want to move forward, I believe is what it is. And basically, no contact's one of them. Exercise is another one. Showing up to your job is another one. So you got three of them down. But that doesn't mean it's just going to cure you. It's going to have to compound over time. One of the things you got to do is create a new routine because I think you guys were living together and seeing each other a lot. So in this particular case, though, if I, I believe that if you were the first guy that she was serious about and you didn't end on a really bad note, you didn't do anything wrong. You actually handled it quite well. You know, you did cry, but that's okay. You didn't, you didn't said you didn't beg or plead. You feel like you're a confident person. Now be confident moving forward. And in this particular case, you might be surprised in a month or two, or you know, two months, you might contact me. You need to be in a place where you go, do I want to explore this or do I want to deal with someone that I constantly have to give approval to? Do I want to deal with someone that is highly insecure or do I want to see what else is out there for me? And that's where you want to be in a month or two months. You want to continue to do the things you're doing. And if she comes back, it's a bonus and you're in the driver's seat going, yeah, maybe we will go on a date and just see what happens. Maybe we will meet up for lunch or dinner and just see what happens with, you know, no high expectation of getting right back together. And that's where you want to be. That's And you, getting your power back, like I said, it's going to take time. Let's just say you got half your power back. You were at ground zero probably when you broke up and you've already gotten to 20, 30, 40%. I mean, at what level do you think it's going to take to get your power back? What's your definition of getting your power back? Write that out, Right. But it will happen if you continue to do the things you're doing. And just by writing out your story right now and seeking some answers, getting a take from me, extracting whatever you get from this video and putting it into action will help you. Be patient a little bit. And like I said, there's going to be a few times where you're going to feel like, oh, no, you know, like I feel so down again. What, did, what happened? Deal with it. How are you going to counteract that? You're a confident person. You said you're a confident person. Be confident in moving forward and doing the actions that you've already been doing. All right? I hope that helps you. Please visit rightmac.com if you've got a breakup story to tell. Otherwise, take it easy.